Nui. Nuis. All right, I've tried to record this intro five times. Here we go. All right, welcome to my first ever tutorial. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a very simple waterfall that doesn't require any liquid simulation, just uses displacers in Cinema 4D, and I think the result is pretty cool. So check it out and let's go. All right, so we're just gonna jump right in. Uh, first, we're gonna throw down a plane, and I'm gonna set this to probably 250 by 500, something like that. I'm just gonna go into wireframe mode and set the segments to something like 100 by 250. Looks about right. And we're just gonna throw down a displacer. And this is what we're gonna use to create the water ripples. So we're actually gonna use a noise, but we're gonna layer up a couple noise, uh, noise layers. So we're just gonna throw down a layer and jump into that and add a noise. Go in there and we're probably gonna just use something like box noise for this. Let me turn off wireframe mode. Yeah, so let's set this to 250 and then let's set the Z scale to 250 or two, oh, 200. We'll set the X scale to something like 75. All right. And uh, you can kind of see that these polygons are having some breaking issues with the fong tag. So I'm just going to turn off the angle limit and that should get rid of that. It should be fine for us. All right. And uh, jump back in here and we're going to animate this. So let's set the animation speed uh, to two and the movement, we want it to move along the Z axis. So let's set that to one in the Z axis and let's set it to two in the animation speed. Uh, let's set it to three. All right, that looks pretty good. And we're gonna just go back up to the, the layer shader and we're going to control or command drag on this little box and duplicate the noise. We'll call this small noise and jump in there and let's just set this to something like uh, blistered turbulence and we'll set the scale back to 100 in all the x y and z and then maybe up to 350 in the global scale all right and uh, this one's actually moving because we just duplicated the other noise layer so that's good uh, jump back into the layer and let's set this to overlay which just mixes the two noise layers together um, and kind of creates a cool look there. Uh, if we want, we could turn down the, uh, the bottom noise layer because I want to actually go back into the displacer in the object tab and boost the height probably up to something like 15. Let's take a look at that. So I feel like this might be a little too uh, small in the box noise so let's just change this 75 x scale back up to 100 and maybe we'll change the speed to 2 all right that looks pretty good so we'll call this our waterfall all right and um, I'm gonna do one more displacer um, actually I'm gonna go back into our layer here and let's duplicate that bottom noise again and we'll call this big noise. And let's just hide the other two so that we can just kind of focus on this one for a second. All right, and we're gonna change this noise to uh, just a classic turbulence, classic noise. And let's go ahead and change the uh, Z scale back to 100. And then we'll change the global scale up to something really big like 650. All right, and let's turn back on the other two layers. And we actually wanna just turn them down a bit. So maybe 50 on the box noise and 50 as well, on somewhere around that, that's fine. And then I'm just gonna go back into the displacer in the object tab and change the height to 25. So now we're getting a lot more big displacement from our bottom layer there. 
And I actually may want to just decrease these a little bit more now that I'm looking at it and just increase the height, something like 35. So we've got a lot of uh, tur big turbulence there. Okay, so next we're just going to actually duplicate the displacer. And let's turn off the bottom one, we'll call this displacer two. And for this one, we actually just want to jump back into the shader and we can just delete these two noises because we just want this big one. And jump back up into the object tab and we're going to displace it on a plane. So we're going to displace it only in the X. So if you look at that, it's something like that, which kind of just displaces these edges um, and that should work. Turn back on the other displacer and we actually want this one to be first. Actually, we want displacer two to be second. And let's just jump into the noise here. And we're just going to change the seed so that it's not the same as the other noise we've got. And now that I'm looking at it from the top, we may just want to change this to something with a little more uh, rigid curves in it. Nothing too crazy. Maybe we'll just pick a turbulence. And we can jump up to the displacer too, change the height to something like 25. All right. Next, we're going to add a bend deformer. And this will be after the two displacers. And we're just going to change this to a box for now, 250 by 250. And it looks like it's, it's bending in this direction. So we're just going to grab the rotate tool, rotate it 90 degrees and then rotate it another 90 degrees. So it's just facing down when it bends. And we can actually just scale this down, maybe to 30%. Make sure that the strength is set to 90. And we'll actually just move this back. And you'll notice we're seeing it kind of stretching along the edge. You might want to keep that, but for our sake, I'm just going to go ahead and check on keep y-axis length, which gets rid of that stretching. And now that I am seeing it without the stretching, I'm going to actually just increase the scale a little bit and smooth that out. Maybe move it up just a bit. All right, we can hide that. All right, let's look what we've got. Cool. OK, and so for the sake of trying to keep this tutorial pretty short, I'm not going to build out the whole scene or do any of the texturing. Um, if you have questions about how I did that in the example, you can just, just message me on Instagram or, or leave a comment, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have or uh, send a screenshot of the Octane nodes. So next, we're just going to add a little bit or a little um, pool to catch the water at the bottom. And then we'll add the water filling the pool and give that some displacement as well. So for this, we're just going to grab a cube, set the height to something like one, f uh, probably 75. And we'll just increase the size. It doesn't really matter what size this is for our sake. I'm just going to move the waterfall up so that it's sort of landing somewhere in there. Then I'm just going to duplicate the cube, move it up, and scale it down. And this is going to be a pool. So we'll just throw that in there, throw that one in there. We've got a little pool. And we might grab the second cube and just increase the Y size just a little bit. I'm going to turn on wireframe mode just so we can see it. All right. So we've got our pool. And now we just want to create some water at the it within the pool that is sort of displaced as the waterfall falls into the pool. So for this, I'm just going to actually drag out a uh, copy holding con controller command and drag out the second cube since that's already sized to the, the pool that we created. And I'm going to move this down, scale it down a little bit in the Y. And uh, when we displace it, it's going to displace uh, vertically, but just to so there's no gaps between the pool and the water, I'm just going to increase the X and Z size just a little bit so that it's hidden, the edges are hidden in there. 
And now that I'm looking at this, we may need to move the pool up just a little bit so that it's not so close to the, the water surface. And we'll just call this wa uh, pool water. All right. Um, so we're going to need to add a bunch of segments in here. So let's do something like 100 and 100 in X and Z. The Y, we don't need any. Um, and for now, I'm just going to turn off the waterfall so we can just kind of focus on this. We're just going to add a displacer underneath the pool water. And we'll go to the shading tab and we'll add a layer. And we're going to do the same thing and add a noise within that layer. And voila, it's done. Just kidding. So we'll jump into this noise. We'll do something similar here where we just give it a really big scale, maybe 650. We can pump up the height a little bit. And uh, let me turn off wireframe mode so we can see it. Maybe even a little bit bigger than 650. Let's do something like 850. All right. And that's our first layer. Um, we want this to sort of be just the big displacement along the surface, and then we can add details. So I'm actually going to animate this. Uh, we'll do an animation speed of 2, similar to what we did before. And we want it to move in the Z as well, so I'll do a Z of 1 in the Z vector, and then uh, speed of 2. Let's just take a look at that. That looks pretty good. Oh, you can see it's actually going through the floor here. That's fine. We don't really... Let's just throw down a, a floor. We won't really see that. All right, so that looks pretty good. Um, we're going to now go back into the displacer and the shader. Um, and then we're going to just control drag up this noise. We'll call the bottom one big noise and the second one detail noise. Jump into that noise. And right now we're just seeing the detail noise uh, because it's a normal and it's set to 100% opacity. So we'll just jump in here. We can really see how this looks. Let's pick a blister turbulence that seemed to work before. And let's take the scale down to something like 450. And it seems pretty crazy right now, but it's actually going to be blended with the other noise. So let's go ahead and do that. Set the normal or set the blending mode to overlay. And we'll probably just decrease the uh, opacity of that to like 60. And now that I'm looking at this, I think we might want to uh, just decrease the size. Let's kind of just scale it down and see how that looks. Yeah, I think I want a little bit more rippling. Uh, let's do 250. And we'll go back up. And now that we decrease the size, let's just bring the opacity down just a little bit. Let's look at that. All right. And uh, maybe we decrease the speed of the small noise a little bit to uh, maybe 1. No, actually, I think I want to keep that at 2 and maybe just decrease the animation speed overall to 1. All right, so that looks pretty good. Um, we're actually seeing the same issue that we were with the Fong tag. It's, it's breaking some of these edges, so we can just dis uh, uh, disable the angle limit on that as well for this. All right, and we can turn back on our waterfall. Pretty good. Uh, now that I'm looking at it with that, I think we should jump back into the displacer on the pool and maybe just de or increase the uh, animation speed up to maybe three. So it's a little more crazy. And we can increase our timeline to something like 150. Yeah, so that looks pretty good. Um, and so now we can just go ahead just for the sake of illustrating. And I'm just going to create a wall just by having uh, creating another bool. I'm just going to create a cube and increase the size on this and position it so that it's sort of intersecting with the waterfall. Just increase that a little bit. And then um, let's actually make it a little deeper, something like that. And then we'll just drag that with holding the command or control key. And let me turn on wireframe mode. And we can pause this. And I'm going to just drag this out. This is going to be the hole in the wall that the water is coming out of. So it just needs to be really thin. Probably put it somewhere like that. And we'll bring it in. That looks about right. All right, and we'll uh, just throw that into a bool and drag the wall in there as well. So now we've sort of got this 
wall with a hole in it that the, the water is coming out of. We can bring that down. And another thing to know is like if you're seeing the water not continuing through there, you can actually just, this is just a plane, so you can literally just grab it and it'll extend. Um, it will decrease the number of segments or it will increase the size of the segments. Um, so if you drag it too far, it may get a little messed up, but you can just increase those here. And then I'll just create a camera just for the sake of showing this and give it a parallel. Okay. And just to make it a nice square, we'll do 1080 by 1080. All right. The last thing you may want to do is just uh, throw both the pool water and the waterfall into a subdivision surface. If I turn off wireframe mode and I just click both of those and then hold alt and click the subdivision surface, you can see it just adds, um, I don't know if you can see it in the uh, screen share, but it just adds a nice little bit of detail, kind of brings those ridges in and that'll really help when you uh, texture this and you see those reflections kind of bouncing off. So let's just watch this one more time. I'm actually gonna turn off the subdivisions for now in the editor, just so that we can kind of see it in full time, in real time. So yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, like I said, it's not, it's not really like a super crazy method it's just like a quick little trick that you can do if if maybe this was super far away and you just had like an environment that you wanted like a little water feature in um, I wouldn't definitely be like super close up on this because it's not like an accurate water sim by any means but uh, yeah it's kind of like a cool little cool little thing if you wanted to have like a, a super low level of detail uh, waterfall in the background uh, it works. I mean, you know, use it how you will, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And you can kind of trick it um, to look even more realistic. Um, obviously, if I render this like with no lights or anything, um, it, you know, it, it kind of looks like trash. But if you use some nice materials and kind of make it look a little more like water, you can do some, some fog effects and things to blend the, the intersection of the waterfall and the pool water. But like I said, it's it's just a quick little trick. I thought um, some people might be interested to know how I accomplished it. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, super simple tutorial, like I said. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you find some use for it. If there's anything else that you would want to see a tutorial on, anything from like my Instagram, just you know, hit me up and let me know. I'm gonna try to start doing them more often. So if you're just in that, go ahead and subscribe and uh, leave a comment and let me know what you think. All right, thanks.